A school board member at the Washington Elementary School District in Phoenix, Arizona, has been drawing some attention for stating at a board meeting last month that she opposes working with and bringing in people from a conservative Christian university because that sends a message to others that they might not be safe in the school district. She expressed concern that the university, Arizona Christian, which uh, the president there is a friend of mine, they do great work. In fact, George Barna, who is a senior fellow here of research uh, at FRC, is also associated with Arizona Christian. And she says they're, she's concerned because they have a mission to influence people to be biblically minded. Yeah, yeah, they do. But is that dangerous? Is she saying that Christians should not be allowed to work with public schools unless they drop their biblical view of the world? I mean, are only secular and humanist worldviews welcomed and those who want to indoctrinate our children and confuse them about their sexual identity, only those can have access to the schools? Well, here to discuss this is Pastor Steve Riggle, Senior Pastor of Grace Woodlands Church in Texas. You may recall that back in 2014, he was one of five local pastors subpoenaed by Houston's then mayor and uh, told to turn over their sermons that addressed homosexuality or gender identity and her effort to, uh, to impose her bathroom policy on the entire state, or entire city, rather. Uh, she's the first mayor I've ever known that had to subpoena to get a sermon. I mean, most pastors will gladly let you listen to their sermons. But anyway, Pastor Steve, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thank you, Tony. Glad to be with you. Well, you're a pastor who is working to equip your people to influence the community around you there in the woodlands right outside of Houston. Give me your reaction to hearing this school board member saying, oh, we can't allow those Christians in. That makes this place unsafe. Well, when I read that this morning, I, uh, I took about an hour and a half and I sent that to a number of friends and leaders all across the country and to some of the leaders in our own congregation. Uh, reacting to that, uh, because in my judgment, it's time for people to stand up and to push back in a way that makes a difference. And that's by uh, electing people to the school boards who will stand for godly moral values and unelecting people like this. I mean, Think about this for a moment. It doesn't take a whole lot of uh, energy to think through the consequences of Christians being cut off from access of these places of public influence or driven away. You know, we hear all the time about the separation of church and state. Really, what these individuals are declaring is they do not want God in government. And quite frankly, they can scream and holler all they want. But God has dominion over everything. And as Christians, we have to, if we're going to follow Christ, we have to walk in concert with him and embrace what he says to be true. And I think by being silent in the face of this hostility, we're acquiescing and actually walking in agreement with the world. Well, we, we virtually turned everything over and now we're trying to get it back. And um, it's, it's really, really important right now that Christians across the country learn that this battle, this moral battle, and it is that, it's not a political battle, it's a moral battle. First of all, is a spiritual battle, and Christians need to learn how to pray, and churches need to learn how to have a prayer meeting and start praying, because these are strongholds that must come down. And secondly, Christians have to engage good people need to start running for school boards across this country. If you want to turn the tide for a generation, you have to take control of the education. Yes. I, I want to go to something. You just talked about the prayer meetings. I know that's very important in your church. That's one of the, the main uh, weekly gatherings is the, it's not just a, uh, you know, it, it's not just another event. It is a key event, a prayer meeting at your church. Could it be, because I'm saying there's a there's a, a lot. You were in D.C. with us recently at our National Day of Prayer and Repentance. You were there. You were a part of that. You prayed. Could it be that actually some of this stuff that's being 
surfaced is because we are praying and it is being revealed. Now it comes to us to take responsibility to address what we now know to be the case. I think that's exactly right. I think I think we were asleep at the switch. Uh, uh, there was always some activists, uh, rightly so, standing up. And uh, we, we, we lost so much ground. And now, uh, under the effect of that, of things that are happening for kindergartners and drag queens and things like that, and now we're horrified. And now we're starting to wake up and to push back. And we have stirred up the workings of hell. Yeah, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. So with that in mind and with that understanding, it's not a time to shrink back or run. It is a time to make sure, number one, we're standing in the power and the strength of the Lord, but we are fully equipped with the army armor that he's provided. We continue to pray, but we stand our ground and we advance. Yes, uh, I was at our state capitol yesterday in, in a couple of meetings, and I told someone there, I said, look, you, you, what you say or stand for may offend some, but you don't have to be offensive in doing that. You don't have to yell and scream and all of those things, but you do. You must stand up when someone says something that's, that's wrong and or, or, or pressures you to take a position or to acquiesce to certain pronouns, you should stand there and say, right. no, no, right. no, that's what has to happen. And uh, I, I, think, I think strategically across the nation, when it comes to these school boards, we've surrendered a critical place. And so yes. locally, locally right here in the Woodlands in the last election, we put three new school board members on. We call them the mama bears. And we did that because the school district refused to take school uh, books out of the school library. Yeah. But they're not just offensive, they're sexually offensive. Right. Pastor Steve, we're out of time, gonna have to leave it there.